my language, but I actually don't see anybody from Sierra Leone here. Is anybody from Sierra Leone? See? There you go. I'm the only slave here. You are not from Sierra Leone. <laughs> anyway, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for having me here this morning. And what a wonderful day to celebrate Refugee Day and just the contributions that refugees have done, have brought into Australia, and just how lucky we are actually to call Australia home. Um, I came to Australia in 2001. I was actually born in Sierra Leone in the west of Africa. If you watch Blood Diamond, that was about us. I have no diamonds, so don't come and search me. <laughs> I have none, beside the one on my hand. Um, growing up in Sierra Leone, we had a 13-year civil war. Like most of you, I was born at a time where war just raged everywhere. I went to bed one day with my mom and dad and my sister. And everything was good. The next day, people were dying everywhere, and there was just so much bad things happening. My mom was able to get us out of Sierra Leone, and we lived in Gambia in a refugee camp for a couple of years until we got lucky enough to be taken in by Australia. I remember the in first interview we had with an Australian official. They came in asking a lot of questions, and my mom says, just smile. We just smile. <laughs> and then they would ask us, how old are you? We just shake our head. <laughs> and we thought, I said to my mom, why does this man sound funny? He sounds like he's speaking from his nose. Hello, how are you? I didn't understand a single thing he was saying. I thought, is this how all white people speak? I don't understand what he's saying. But we just smiled every step of the way. And I remember when they came back to do our medical test, and I thought, why are they checking us so much? They kept checking everything to see if we were healthy. And the most important day was when they came and said, you're going to Australia. This was in 2000, when they had the Sydney Olympics, actually. Did anybody remember that? And we were watching TV, and somebody said, you're going to Australia. Do you know that that's at the end of the world? I'm like, no. It's like there is nowhere else after Australia. You are, they're taking you somewhere so far, you can never come back. I'm like, well, that's very scary, isn't it? But most people didn't know where Australia was at that time. It was just this tiny place somewhere across the world. But I remember when we had that. It took three days to get to Australia. We went to Senegal, we went to France, and then we got to Singapore. When we got to Singapore, we went to the bathroom to, you, to you wash our hands and the tap would not work. It was one of those taps you had to put your hands under like that. And we thought, strange people, why do you have to do that? We were turning the tap, hitting it, <laughs> and then we looked to somebody else who, was, who just went like this. Huh? And then the water came out. And my mom said, this is going to be a long life. <laughs> Too long, <laughs> too stressful. Maybe I should go back. <laughs> we finally got from Singapore to Sydney. And then we got to Adelaide. And we came out and it was cold. It was June 9, actually. 13 years, a couple of weeks ago. And it was so cold. But we were so happy to finally be here. And then they took us to our house in Torrensville. That's where they used to have refugees a couple of years ago. And we got in and we sat there. And we're thinking, we finally made it. And then somebody who was very smart decided to have a lot of ice cream in the fridge in winter. And being refugees, we just ate all the ice cream. But we were cold and we kept on eating the ice cream. But I think we found joy when we found the Asian grocery down the road here. And we found chili. Oh God, we were so happy to find chili, finally. And we found peanut butter. And then we found okra, lady fingers. And we just said, well, maybe it wouldn't be so bad living in Australia. I remember the first time we went to the city, Run the mall actually, and we had so many Asian people. My mom totally freaked out and she said, I think we were in the wrong continent, Khadija. I think they brought us to the wrong place. And I said, I don't think so, mom. So we asked somebody, Why there were so many Asians? And they said, Well, because we're neighbors with them, that's why there's so many of them. And we're like, Okay, we're not in the wrong place. We're totally in Australia, not in the wrong place. So, to be honest with you, we came to Australia with so many hopes and dreams of a better life. And Australia didn't disappoint, to be honest with you. My mom had fought very hard for me and my daughter, my sister, to come to Australia, to have an education, to have the life that she would have never had, or the life that we would have never had back in Sierra Leone. 
My mom decided to send me to a girl's school because she didn't want any boy to say, I like you, Khadija. She wanted me to just be among girls and not to have a boyfriend. So I went to Mitchell Girls High School, 600 girls. I was the only black kid there. That was very strange. You are lucky to be a Dermity, trust me. Everybody else looks like you. I went to a school where I was the only brown child. Everybody thought I was weird. But I loved it though. While there, I, you know, I concentrated on my education. My mom was so happy to finally have me speaking English properly. And the fact that every single day I grew in my confidence. A couple of two years ago, my mom finally finished her studies as a nurse. And she went and did her master's in nursing education. And I remember standing there thinking to myself, this is the dream. And when I graduated from university, it was the same feeling. We have come all that way across the world for a better life. And there we were holding our degrees in our hands. We have made it. Australia had given us the second chance that we wanted. When I got here, people were racist. Kids at school said, you black monkey, go back where you come from. People in the bus would push us because we were black. Or people would act like this, we smelled funny. Or old women who hold their bags because a black child was coming and they thought we were going to steal from them. All of that happened. And English wasn't even my first language. Like most of you, English is my third language. I have to think in two other languages before I get to English. But I didn't let that stop me. Because you know why? I did not dodge bullets. I did not escape being raped and killed to come to this wonderful land and allow things like that to get me down. My mother did not suffer for me to get here and let things like that stop me from having the life that she wants for me. I know as young people, we come to Australia with the hopes and dreams of our parents. The other day I was saying to somebody, it was so scary to know that I carried the blood, sweat and tears of my mom. All the dreams she had, it was all on my shoulders. I know our parents want us to be lawyers, doctors, engineers. They want us to be everything they never had. And that can be so stressful. But I had to realize that, yes, all those dreams were wonderful, but I had to create a life for myself. I had to find what I was good at and what I love and become that. That was actually the greatest gift I could give her. When I got to Australia, I was constantly sick. I think Australia hated me, something about the weather or something. I was constantly sick, and I struggled at school, which was very disappointing for my mom. But I pushed on. I did year 12 twice. I divided it into two years. But I made it at the end, and I got into law and politics as Flinders. But it was through hard work and not being willing to give up. My mom was disappointed because it wasn't what she wanted for me. She didn't think she would bring her daughter to Australia and she would always be sick. But I worked hard. I focused on doing the best that I could do. And when I finally got to Flinders, I realized that I didn't like law. I like politics. I like development studies. I like community work. So I changed and I focused on that. My, when my mom first heard me speak at an event, she said, I'm happy you do study law. You are definitely somebody who needs to change the world and what you have chosen is better for you. She saw that me being happy doing what I love was much better than studying something just because of what people would think, oh, my daughter studied law. That's nice, but if I don't like law, what's the point of it? So life is not going to be hard. You are going to have challenges. But it's what you choose to do with those challenges that will change your life. A couple of years ago, I won my first award it was the Channel 9 Young Achiever of the Year Award. I remember being in a room full of 600 people. We had a table, we were the only black table, the only multicultural table. And when I won that award, I remember asking the people who gave me the award, why did you give me this award? And they said, you're not born in Australia. English is not your first language, but you have worked hard to make your life better and the lives of your community better. That is why they gave me the award. See, it doesn't matter what color you have, whether you speak perfect English or whether you come from a little community. At the end of the day, if you're willing to work hard, people will give you a chance. If you're willing to stand up and fight for what you believe in, help support your community, it will pay off one day. 
I'm not different from any of you. And that's what's wonderful about being here today, to say I was where you were a couple of years ago. When everything sounded different, when I was just trying to put ABC together, when I was trying to understand where to go to after school, when I was struggling with being African and Australian at the same time. But 13 years later, here I am. The other day I was named one of South Australia's 50 most influential women. And I'm black, I'm African, I'm a refugee. And that's what's wonderful. As refugees, we have gone through terrible things. As young people, we have seen things most kids would never see in their lifetime. But what we choose to do with that experience, that will make the biggest difference in your life. I chose to channel all that anger and disappointment and pain into changing my community and helping them settle in South Australia, helping them develop. That's what I did with it. What will you do with your experience? Will you work for your community? Will you try to change it? Will you try to develop it? Don't hide. Don't feel inferior. Nobody's better than you. We didn't choose to be refugees. We didn't choose to lose everything. We didn't choose to lose some of our parents or our family members. We didn't choose any of that. But we get to choose what we do once we get here to this wonderful place that has given us a home, a second chance at life, a chance that we can give to our daughters. I love that the theme is language. That we can pass that to our children. Five generations later, I would love to see my daughter or grandchildren speak in my language and that I can teach them how to make okra soup. I would love to see that. We need to leave something behind for the next generation and our culture is what we can leave behind for them. So as we celebrate this week, Let's also celebrate how strong we are as refugees. It took strength to come here. It takes strength every day to speak a language that is not your language, to learn in a language that doesn't come natural to you. It takes strength to be a minority in a community where people might look at you funny, people might treat you bad. It takes strength. It takes resilience. Let's celebrate those qualities that we have and let's channel that for change. Let's use that to contribute to a new home and show that we didn't just come here to just have it easy. We came because we wanted something better and we're willing to work for that better life. We're willing to contribute to this wonderful nation. I am proud every day to be an African Australian. I am proud for what it what stands for. I am proud because this, I'm not just visiting Australia. I'm not just someone who came in anymore. This is my home in every sense of the word, and I would rather be nowhere else except Australia. As I look at you all, you're my brothers and sisters, because we're united by an experience that most people will never share. So I know how you feel, and you know how I feel. But I hope that, despite our past, we can look forward to a brighter future, and that we can all work towards creating that brighter future. So I hope you have a wonderful week, and I hope you have fun speaking in your languages and sharing those languages with everybody else. But most of all, I hope you enjoy celebrating how far you have come and how lucky we are to be in a nation like this. Thank you.